we do have a bunch of nice questions tonight. Um, they're all pretty technical, but there are different topics, so that is nice. Uh, and actually, I thought a good place to start would be, let me see, I think Toby mentioned he wasn't going to be here. And I'm trying to find my participants window to confirm. I do not see Toby, but I'll show you an example. This one's for you, Toby, because it was a good question that I think uh, a lot of people don't really take advantage of when they're using particle systems. Um, so Toby's question was this, instancing positions, life driving color, uh, how to use the life and or XYZ position of particle systems to drive the color of instance geometry. I'm looking to change control each instance rather than the whole geo. And I thought this was an interesting one because life is often something I don't see taken advantage of when people are working with particle systems, but it's a really easy way to, you know, add a nice natural feeling, add a good bit of like fade in and fade out kind of options on your particle systems, which can be really useful instead of having just like birth, do a bunch of stuff and then disappear. So actually, well, I'll show you the, the finished product was what you guys were looking at before you joined the call. this old little network right here. So let me scratch this real quick and we'll rebuild it. If you have questions as I'm going through, please put them in the chat. But it's really not that hard, which is a nice thing. So, you know, for example, I like to start stuff out with a geometry for the particle system. In this case, I'll use a sphere. I'm gonna plug that into a sort and I'll set the point sort to random just so that it doesn't look like it's doing that twirly shenanigans. Plug that into a particle SOP. And now we've got this real basic, nothing too special particle system. I'll put that into a null. Excuse me, I'll go ahead and make my geometry that I want to instance. And I'll delete the torus because I've never met anyone who We'll spend money for a torus. Turn on render and display flags. And then I'll just turn the size of this down just because you know how it is with these things. Cool. So I have my box. I'm going to instance this a bunch. Now you could go straight from SOP to instancing in the newer builds of Touch Designer. So for example, I turn instancing on. I can see chop that SOP. So I could very well feed straight into this you know, assign my X, Y, Z, which are gonna be P, and the P stands for position, zero, one, and two. And that's doing its own merry good stuff. And for example, I could actually go to the instance two page to the alpha parameter, and I could do the little drop down and see what other info I have. And you can see there's a bunch of other info like P state, life zero, life one, N for normals. So life is an attribute that's, that's by default included in a particle system. So I can even just hit life zero, and we can see just from doing that, it's pulling that life attribute. So they start black, alpha zero, because the life starts at zero. And then as they get closer to the edge and their life builds up, they become white as their alpha fills out. Now this is nice, but it doesn't actually give you a lot of control. So it, it's still, I would consider this more or less meaningless. So I'm gonna delete that. And usually what I end up doing anyways at this point is, let me clear these out. I still end up switching over to chop land. So I'll set up a sop to chop. And I'll move this geo over just because the reality is we're going to get the data and we're going to have to do some kind of processing on it. So in this case, you have these buttons here for the default attributes, uh, X, Y, Z, RGB, alpha, et cetera, et cetera. It's annoying they don't have one for life just because it's, it's such a common one on these um, particle systems but we can always just grab that by turning on custom. And then in the attribute scope, we just want to give the name of the attribute that we want to pull out. So if you don't know the name in any case that you're working, you can always middle click on the geometry. And you can see we've got four attributes. We've got V, we've got P state, we've got life, and we've got N. In this case, we want life. So we can just go ahead and type life. And now we have these two channels added here. We have life zero and life one. Now, life zero is actually the individual lifetimer of each particle. 
and life one is their maximum life. So in this case, we can see life one is three seconds. That's because if I go to my particle SOP, life expectancy is set to three. If I set this to five, for example, we'll see that these values change to five. If I set it 10, same thing. So that life one channel shows you the life expectancy of that particle. Uh, what you can also do, for example, is if you start introducing things like life variance, which has the particle SOP automatically vary the life expectancy of 10 by unit one. So you can see this case, now we have a range of life from nine to 11. But let's just simplify this for the example. I'll go back to three and I'll just reset this particle system. So we have max life of three. We've got our current life counter. So let's go ahead and first, I'm gonna select out my TXTYTZ data with a select shop. Plug that into a null and then just slowly start setting up my instancing again. So now what I can do is use another select chop to pull out my life channel. And in this case, really all I need is life zero. So what I can do is grab channel name life zero. I have this nice kind of incrementing wave that's going across. And the simplest thing I could do is take this and essentially just crunch the number range and you know rearrange it to something that's a lot better because this goes from zero to three. Probably what I want is actually something like zero to one. So in this case, I'll just put a math chop after this. And I know the range is gonna be from zero to three. And now I have a zero to one, which I can easily use for something like alpha without having it blow out or be in the wrong range. Um, so this is, is a step I highly recommend generally. And then I can just merge that back into the data that I'm feeding into this instancing. So now if I go to my instancing page and I go to alpha and I can say life zero. So you can see now it's a lot more natural looking. We don't have all this stuff blowing out around the edges at like pure white. And actually what I'll do really quickly is just make a small render setup because you can't actually see alpha in geometry viewer. So I'll set up a camera, quick light. I'll make a quick fong material assign that on the geometry. And on the Fong material, I'm just gonna turn on blending and transparency. And then I'll go ahead and drop a render top. Now it's a bit hard to see because of the black background. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, set the old checkerboard. So that makes it a lot easier to see alpha movement happening here. So it's, you know, the concept is really simple. Really, you just grab this life attribute, it's built in. I would usually grab it in chop format. You can grab it in dats, but you know, a dat with that many rows all changing every frame is, is gonna not be an optimal signal flow. Um, and then, you know, if you wanted to do something a little bit more complex, like let's say you wanna use this to actually pull out a color from a range of colors, uh, it's as easy as first making the range that you want to have. So in this case, I'll just make a noise. And what I'll do is I'll give it three channels for R, G, and B. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that the left side is going to be my starting color and the right side is my ending color. And then the nice thing about having this zero to one range is I can actually use that in a lookup chop. So that zero is going to be the starting color. And as it kind of goes from zero to one, it's essentially just going to scan through these colors to the right side. And that's super simple. I can't stress enough how useful lookup chop is a lot of these things. The second input is going to be what we're scanning through. And the first input is going to be basically your index. And now we can see that it's scanning through and giving us RGB values for all of our pixels. Now, the funny thing is this looks like it's kind of trailing along left or right because the fact that the life is so uniformly also basically just going from left to right. So the nice thing is with this setup, 
we can just kind of pull all this stuff over to the side, take our RGB channels, merge them in, and then back on our instancing, go to our instancing two page and then assign RGB colors. Now this obviously looks insane and doesn't look like art by any stretch because I just used random noise. But if you did have something a little bit more tasteful in the RGB kind of lookup table that we're making here, uh, then this would work totally fine, would look nice, would do all the things. And the nice thing about this system is it's not really limited in any way. So really you, you wanna be careful about the math we're doing on this life here. So if you start changing the life, you probably have to change that math. But the principle kind of works with any geometry. So if I, for example, change my sphere to be a grid and I reset the old particle system here, everything works as it should. And actually this gives you a, a kind of better view of that side of the alpha. And what we can also do is take our camera use the look at parameter to look at our geo. And that way it's, it's a lot easier just to kind of get a side view of this geometry. So it's really that simple. Uh, I highly recommend experimenting with it. The life parameter is super useful. Uh, Simon is saying it's also really easy to grab a ramp top, top to chop if you want to control RGBA. That is a great suggestion. Let's actually do that. Why I didn't think of that is it baffles me. So if we grab a ramp, let's make some colors here. Uh, and then what we can do is a top to chop to dump that ramp into some chop channels. And now we can see here as the life, actually, let me open this up in a viewer so it's easier to see here. So as the life of particles is increasing, they're actually scanning colors across this range of the ramp. So good suggestion, Simon. That's, uh, that's actually probably a way better way than to approach it than throwing down a random noise chop. Um, does anyone else have any questions about this before we move to our next question? I think this is super useful. Um, definitely take advantage of life attributes. Very helpful. You can make a lot of nice effects with them.